everybody, I'm Richard Holder and welcome to the channel. Please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Because if you do, it means I get to keep testing. So go ahead, hit those buttons. <laughs> Today we're talking about the most powerful factory LS camshaft ever produced by GM. And of course I'm talking about the LS9 camshaft. And now you're thinking, hey Richard, what about that LS7 camshaft? Let me know in the comments if you think I'm wrong, but when I tested the factory LS7 camshaft versus the factory LS9 camshaft, they made the same power, but remember, that shouldn't stop you from making a comment to tell me I'm right or I'm wrong. But let's take a look at the LS9 camshaft. I know it was designed for the 6.2 liter factory supercharged LS9 motor, but I'm here to tell you, it does more than make a good blower cam. Now I ran it as a blower cam, I ran it as a naturally aspirated cam, I ran it on a small displacement naturally aspirated motor, and they also ran it on, drum roll please, a turbo motor, but that begs the question, is the LS9 camshaft the best cam ever produced? Let's find out. Okay guys, let's jump in and take a look at three different combinations that I ran an LS9, the factory LS9 camshaft on. I want to illustrate that these camshafts, basically any camshaft, is fairly versatile. You can run it on a lot of different combinations. We ran it on a small displacement NA motor, which it wasn't designed for. We ran it on a turbo motor, which it wasn't designed for. And we ran it on a supercharged motor, which it was designed for. Let's take a look from the factory. The LS9 camshaft came on the LS9 motor. It was a factory supercharged motor, but they didn't design the camshaft unlike what a lot of guys think. They didn't design the camshaft for maximum power output, quite honestly. If they were looking to maximize power output, they're very talented. They have all the means to do that and all the intelligence and sharpness and experience. And they could make really, really powerful cams if that's what they wanted to do. But as I said, they have a lot of other criteria that they design cams around. And the result is something like with this LS9 camshaft. But we're going to take a look. First of all, we're going to apply the LS9 camshaft to a 6.2 liter. In this case, it was a GM B15 LSX crate motor, meaning it was designed by GM for use in an aftermarket application in a supercharged or otherwise forced induction application. So it had a lot of good things. It had this LS9 blower camshaft on it. It had good rectangular port heads. It had an LSX block. It had low compression. It had all the things it was designed to really use with our what we typically associate with the boosted application. So we took the LSX motor. We put an LS3 intake manifold on it, put an oil pan, because we had to complete it. It doesn't come complete. Basically, it's kind of a long block. And we completed and first ran it in a with our LS9 camshaft. We had long tube headers and a Holly HP management system. And the low compression motor produced 522 horsepower and 492 foot pounds of torque. Here's what happened when we put a supercharger on it. In this case, it was a Whipple running about, uh, this was 16 or 17 pounds or 845 horsepower and 730 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened when we turn the boost up even more with a four inch pulley instead of a four and a half inch pulley. We're looking at 930 horsepower or so and 800 foot-pounds of torque. So not surprisingly, the factory supercharged camshaft, I'll go ahead and make sure I put the specs up here early in this video so you can check it out. You know what the specs are on the factory LS9 camshaft, but not surprisingly, this camshaft worked fairly well on a positive displacement supercharged application. Yeah, I'll be it one that's making a lot more power than it was originally designed for, but that really was just a function of boost. So check one off. The blower cam works on a blower application, but now let's check out the others. Okay, now that we've taken a look at running the LS9 on a supercharged application, which we know that it works on because that's actually what it was designed for. Let's take a look at an example that will tell us actually a lot more about this particular cam and how it's, it will perform out of its element. So we're going to take a look at running this LS9 camshaft on a 5.3 liter, basically a stock one. This was an LM7. We'll go ahead and take a look at our test description here. It was a stock LM7 5.3 liter from the wrecking yard. It did have a valve spring upgrade on the factory 706 heads because we were going to run a bunch of different camshafts in it. It had a stock truck intake and throttle body, inch and seven eighths headers, bigger injectors tuned with the Holly HP management system. And what I did to show you as a comparison, because this illustrates 
what that camshaft will actually do, whether it's on a 5.3 or a 6.2, whether it's on a blower application or turbo application, it really illustrates this on the smaller NA motor. So this is what our stock 5.3 did with headers and no accessories and run cold and yada yada the way that we do on the engine dyno. It produced 350-ish horsepower, 354 horsepower and 380 or 81 foot-pounds of torque. This is with the factory, very small LM7 camshaft, 191 degrees at, at 50. Here's what, ha I'll go ahead and put the factory specs of the LM camshaft up there. Here's what happened when we ran the LS9 camshaft. You can see, <laughs> this, is, this is a perfect illustration of why it would be cool to have VTEC on a an LS motor because we could have two different distinct cam profiles and have all the low speed power of the LM7 camshaft and all the high speed power of the LS of the LS9 because this is exactly what happened. Equip the LS9 camshaft, the peak power jumped up a lot, 418 horsepower from 354. So big jump up in peak power. The problem is the LS9 camshaft, we can see the crossover point here at 4,600 RPM. I'll go ahead and give you an idea what's going on there. In fact, I can go ahead and we'll zoom in here. So if we take a look at that right there. That's our crossover point at actually a little less than 4,600, 4,550. So we take a look at that, but everything below that point, everything all from here, over to here, <laughs> all of this, all of this that you see here, that's all the extra torque offered by the smaller LM7 camshaft. So the smaller camshaft made a lot more power from below 2,500 all the way up to 4,500. Then what is essentially the bigger LS9 camshaft, even though it was designed for supercharge application, made a lot more power out of the top. And the reason for that is because the GM engineers designed that camshaft to be more effective at the top of the RPM range. And this isn't unusual for guys that are for cam designers that are designing camshafts specifically for supercharged positive displacement supercharge applications. And the reason for that is the positive displacement supercharger itself by design has fairly immediate boost response and has lots of low speed power. So what they're trying to do is make it even more effective with the camshaft at the top of the rev range. And you can see that's exactly what they've done. So if you put a camshaft in that is more power, that offers more power at the top end and you have all the bottom end and immediate boost response of a positive displacement blower, that combination should work pretty well. <laughs> but as we see here, what is really happening is that LS9 camshaft is giving away a bunch of power down low, which is why I normally do not recommend the LS9 camshaft for either NA applications, whether it's a 5.3 or a 6.2, or I don't usually recommend it for turbo applications because what, we, and we won't see this on the turbo combination, we have to look at that here. But if you were to run both of these camshafts with a turbo, the smaller cam, the LM7 camshaft, would be much more responsive in terms of spooling the turbo up. But <laughs> the bigger camshaft would certainly make more horsepower per pound of boost out on the big end. Let's check out what happens when we ran it with a turbo. Okay, so far we've proven our LS9 camshaft, not surprisingly since it's a blower cam, works well with the blower, in that case the Whipple Supercharger, also work well on what essentially is two different combinations. One, it worked well on a smaller 5.3 liter cathedral port head and not the blower application, but also work well on a naturally aspirated motor. Again, not a blower combination. But now we need to find out how well it works on a turbo. So I also ran the LS9 camshaft on a turbo combination. In this case, it was kind of a unique one. We'll go ahead and take a look at the test description here. But it was an LS3 block, an LS3 aluminum block. We bored it out. We also installed a 4.8 liter crank. So we either de-stroked the LS3, or you can also look at it like we put a big bore 4.8 together, which is the way that I like to look at it. But we had the 4.8 crank in the LS3 block. We had 6300 Lenati Forge rods, JE Custom Forge small dome pistons, Trick Flow 255 Gen X CNC ported rectangular port heads, a Holly high ram for the rec port heads, a single 102 millimeter throttle body, inch and seven eighths headers before we put the turbo on it. We ran it with a Holly HP management system. And so our basically <laughs> de-stroked LS3 produced a peak of 512 horsepower 
and 415 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happened after we added the turbo to our LS9 cammed D-stroked LS3. And for this combination, we'll go ahead and take a look at our test description. We added a single precision 76, 75 millimeter turbo. We had our DNA tubular headers feeding our custom Y pipe, two turbo smart 45 millimeter hypergate wastegates, CX racing air to water intercooler run with dyna water. We had good fuel in this. We had 22 degrees of timing in it. And I'll go ahead and put the boosters up here so you can take a look at that. But this combination produced set right at 700 horsepower, 699, oh, 700.8, so over 700 horsepower, <laughs> and right at 600 foot-pounds of torque. But the interesting thing is, if you take a look, I'm going to go ahead and move myself over here so you can see all of the curves so I can get out of the way. But if you take a look at the NA power curve and you look at the turbo power curve, they're very, very similar, and that's not surprising because that's what boost does. So whatever camshaft you have, in this case, we have our blower cam. If you add boost to it, it's just going to mimic, especially with a turbo, if you have a consistent boost level, it's just going to mimic what's already there. So whatever you do to the camshaft, whatever camshaft you put in your motor, when you add a turbo and you add boost to it, it's just going to multiply what is already there. So that begs the question, okay, Richard, <laughs> if we add a turbo to our LS9 camshaft, would you consider the LS9 a turbo camshaft? Well, yes and no, just as that every camshaft is a turbo camshaft. But the question now, and we're going to get to our conclusion, would I actually recommend the LS9 camshaft for a turbo? Okay, guys, it's that time again. What did we learn? What is the takeaway from all this testing on the most powerful factory LS cam ever produced? Go ahead and make that comment about the LS7 camshaft. But what is the takeaway here? Well, first of all, we know that the LS9, because it was designed by the factory engineers for a supercharged application, it worked very well with our supercharger. Our B19 LSX crate motor with the Whipple supercharger with that LS9 camshaft made good power. And actually, I think the most enlightening part of all of this video is the test that I ran on the 5.3 liter because it really illustrates what that camshaft does and tells us what to expect when we run that particular camshaft with a turbo. On the 5.3 liter, it made lots of peak power. Power picked up from 350 or so horsepower up to over 400. So good power gains from a factory camshaft. We expect those kind of gains on an NA motor or on an NA camshaft on a 5.3 liter, but from a factory camshaft, those are big power gains but it really illustrated what happens and really illustrate the design of that camshaft. It softened power production down low. Below 4,500 RPM, it lost a lot of torque, as much as 50 foot-pounds compared to the factory LM7 camshaft. And this is what illustrates whether or not this camshaft is actually a turbo cam. It is a turbo cam in the way that every other camshaft is a turbo cam, meaning that if we put this camshaft in a motor like we did in the test and we add boost to it, it just elevates whatever is there. The problem is, and the reason that I rarely ever recommend a guy running the LS9 camshaft on a factory 4.8 or 5.3 is because it is so soft down low. And that has a twofold negative effect. One, it already has less power down low, so people aren't going to like that. But also with a turbo application, less power down low, less torque production tends to soften boost response. So you have less power and you have less boost response, which means even less power than another guy that has a more responsive combination. And the problem is it's just not a good fit for a turbo. Yes, every cam is a turbo cam, and that one can be used as a turbo cam, but I usually do not recommend it. All right, Mr. Holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.